Hey, what's up, y'all? Back at it again. I can't even say that without what's the saying, you know. Uh, oh, my gosh. Back at it again. That's so terrible. Uh, some songs just get stuck in your head. This is not about music. This is about Adidas. And an article I wrote um, a couple of days ago, then I shared it on LinkedIn. And let me go to LinkedIn so you guys can see the um, feedback on the post thus far. And uh, what I want to do is get into a quick dial. See, there's been a lot of questions back and forth. So I shared it on LinkedIn. And we've been talking back and forth and some interesting things are starting to develop from the conversation. And this is the part that I really love about um, talking about the sneaker industry from the business side and the marketing side and the retail side of things as opposed to this is a dope shoe. Um, this is the side that gets us jobs. So you guys that are on the YouTube station, I know the majority of you are there for the sneaker videos and stuff like that, but um, what I hope is that you'll start looking at these videos, sharing these videos, subscribing, of course, and all of that stuff. So you can get smarter about this and then you can decide if you're going to go to school or you're going to pursue um, jobs in different areas of the sneaker industry. So this, uh, there was a lot of conversation, conversation. and what you'll see is uh, 25 reactions, 1,400 views, 14 comments, and then you can see the people who are looking at the information. And Adidas is actually responding to the article. So I was like, okay, let's go and give Adidas more information about what I think they should do. And if you look here, you'll see, I said that Adidas needs to pull back from traditional retail, right? And um, my reason for saying that is because of, I can show you better than I can tell you because I did open up an article that talks about what I call forced contraction at retail where the brand could actually take on more of its own product and they don't have to deliver it because of the supply chains being messed up due to COVID. Now, I wrote this article um, last, actually only about five months ago, I wrote this article and I took this picture of an Adidas wall at a Foot Locker. Now, this is not to call out Foot Locker, this is to call out every chain. If I had taken this picture at Finish Line, it would be the same. If I had taken this picture at City Gear, which City Gear doesn't really carry the Ultra Boost in the in this region down here in the Memphis, um, the Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Tri-State region, they don't really carry the, that product very much and rightfully so because when they did about three years ago, it actually went down to $19.99, buy one, get one for a dollar. So what am I discussing here? I was looking at the $54.99, $39.99, $79.99 on NMD, but here's where things get interesting because you have the trail NMD, but over here on the side, and I didn't even, I took two pictures, and I don't know why I didn't put it in this article, but the Ultra Boost, and you see starting on this side is the Ultra Boost, and you see $99.99, um, 99, 69, 99, 59, 99. That's the 19. These are the 19s. This is the Trail Ultra Boost. These are now, right now, I wrote this five months ago. These shoes are now 69.99 at Foot Locker right now. Um, so what's going to happen when Adidas says, "Hey, we got this great new shoe with this awesome improvement." And it's a fantastic running shoe model. And if it goes to the same accounts where you get the sale, what you're going to find is, and I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, what are brothers? But then I was like, you know what? That's not what this is about. Anyway, so you can see that Adidas put a lot of thought into this shoe. This is not just some, we're going to release this cool looking shoe that we're going to give to these collaborators so we can kind of uh push uh reach youth culture that's not what this ultra boost 21 is about this thing is about performance and because it's about performance i said well you know what let me check and see what's happening in my region once again i stick with my region because to look at these things and try to look at it on a national scale is unfair to Adidas when I can only look at my tri-state region and what's happening here versus what's happening on a natural scale. So I always try to look at something from a micro point of view and then I relay it and compare it to a macro point of view, right? 
Um, now, we have a couple of different running stores here in Memphis that are specialty stores. What are specialty stores? Stores that focus on a particular um, segment. And the specialty running stores, one is called Breakaway Memphis, and the other is uh, Fleet Feet, which Fleet Feet actually has locations all over the place. So they're not just a local store. Breakaway is really a local store. So when you come to Breakaway, they're not selling shoes online. They have a very strong running culture here in Memphis. So when I stated that Adidas should pull back from traditional retail, it's almost impossible for them to pull back from traditional retail because Breakaway Running, as, in, as, as basically this is our baseline, right? Does not even carry Adidas. They carry, here are the shoes list, right? Brooks, Hoka, Mizuno, New Balance, Nike, North Face, Saucony, and those are the shoes. So when we come over here, we got accessories and apparel. You don't see a tray foil on this page or three stripes anywhere. Anywhere. So breakaway running, and I'm saying that Adidas needs to focus on specialty stores. They're not even available in the best specialty store in my area. So they are all, they are basically going to be forced to push these shoes back into finish line, JD Sports, Foot Locker, etc. Uh, maybe Dick's sporting good and i don't know if that's a good thing for the brand now here's another situation now here's another store i meant to say is um fleet feet and fleet feet is a specialty running store so they only carry running shoes at fleet feet we can scroll through this and this is about 30 lines of product and you're going to get the same product basically that's at breakaway with and a few additional items but what you will find on each of these stores is that Nike, Adidas' biggest competitor, is carried at both of these shops. The Zoom Pegasus is carried at both of these shops. It, they have Nike product. But Fleet Feet also has uh, Carhu. They've got On Running. You know, they've got Diadora, which I'm looking at doing a post on Diadora tomorrow. But they have all of these brands. No adidas so what happens with a brand that creates a brand that's that big and here you see the infinity run and here's the biggest issue what someone raised over here on this side where is it uh paul paul griffin he said they're up against it from the start the infinity react run was released with the internal study showing 50 percent 52 percent less injuries when he said that it sparked something in my head and I was like, oh, wow. The Ultra Boost is a, comp when you have shoes that are basically in the same segment, the Ultra Boost sits in a no man's land. When we go back to Fleet Feet, right? And we look at these prices, we're looking at 120 to 160 as your price point for cushion neutral runners. Well, let's see if we can go to neutral or if they have it broken down by neutral shoes men's let's go back to men's neutral running all right so neutral running which is what the adidas ultra boost kind of falls in this cushion kind of ride that's for neutral runners it's not for stability it's not trying to keep your foot stable in a shoe they're up against these products fresh foam 150 hoka 150 and we keep going down this list and you have the hoka but it has carbon now adidas does have um the torsion that's in this shoe they have this new torsion that's not it right there it's the yellow piece that you'll see on the shoe but when you compare it to 130 140 120 there's 160 um i think i only found one other 180 on this page and it features a carbon uh shank inside of the shoe so adidas is at this point where their shoe is severely overpriced it is no longer a cool shoe and they have to figure out how to sell this thing without falling into the situation. You guys, I'm still scrolling here so you can see the pricing on these cushion kind of running shoes that are taken more seriously than the Ultra Boost. And there's only a couple of models at 180. And one of those features carbon. So Adidas really is exactly what Paul said. They're up against it from the start. What do they have to do? 
there's a few different things, but this is going to get. All right. So sorry about that quick interruption. This is one of those situations I was going to wind down the video, but I was like, you know what? I probably should finish this and say a couple of more things, but I'm just going to wrap it up now. And I know it's like 10 minutes in and you guys are like, dude, you're talking too long. But this is a really good conversation, man. How does Adidas avoid placing their footwear? Because let's go back because I want you guys to look at this video. It's super informative. And I mean, that's just great graphics, man. Whoever the marketing dudes are on that, they killed that. Performance was due to the gate cycle. We all agreed for the need of more boost. We redesigned the mixer from the ground up. Probably the biggest innovation or exploration was on these LEP torsion systems. Same, the torsion system, right? So that's comparable to the carbon fiber in a sense, but not really because the carbon fiber shank probably runs the full length of that hoka shoe. We started from not the like meat. So concentrating on the new structure, how to highlight it and energize it. All right, so I'm showing this because I'm trying to stress that this, every Ultra Boost has been a running shoe from the beginning. That's what it was, right? So we've known for a very long time that this is a performance shoe. It simply took off as a lifestyle shoe and i think adidas is pushed towards kanye wore the lifestyle shoe um these kardashians or somebody wore the wore the uh, ultra boost i said lifestyle shoe i think that disrupted the shoe as a performance model and it took away from the technical aspects of the shoe and Fashion works in cycles. What's hot right now does not remain hot, unless it's Jordan Brand. In that instance, 2015, Jordan Brand fell off like a brick because they threw a bunch of shoes out there and they made too many shoes and it wasn't as cool anymore. So what we have is a situation where Adidas did a very similar thing, which is why I keep floating back to this picture where they dropped a lot of different styles and they played the lifestyle game. And in doing so they almost disrupted themselves and then they also came back with you know and you won't see it over here in this section of the nmd i talked about this on this post as well i talked about the fact that they rolled out a bunch of shoes pro fear and all of these different lifestyle shoes and the nmds that had prime knit that were priced at 180. they pushed the pricing of their shoes up so far that they priced themselves out of the casual consumer walking into a Foot Locker or somewhere like that. Now, the casual consumer, interestingly enough, I wrote this last August, which is only five, six months uh, back. The same shoes are sitting on the shelves for Adidas at these retailers, the same shoes. That hints at a problem in this region, at least, that Adidas is going to have to counter, they're going to have to fix it some kind of way, right? But there are opportunities for them to repair the issue. I could, I can't even begin to jump into all those. But the shoe looks amazing. Am I getting a pair? Yeah. I'm going to get a pair, and um, primarily because I'm doing a ton of running with my daughter right now since we can't really do track. She doesn't want to do indoor because she doesn't want to be around a lot of people, and I don't blame her. She's 13, but she acts so old. Um, I'm getting more running shoes because I have to run to try and keep up with her and make her better as a sprinter. I'll try the shoes. I'm going to do a video on them, and um, you know, I don't know when that'll be. I just got another three or four pair of shoes, so it's going to take some time. But Adidas has a really big issue because where they have to sell their shoes is not where they are taken seriously. Even Under Armour is located at Fleet Feet. Even Under Armour. But Adidas is not. Um, that's a big issue.
So when we talk serious specialty running stores, Adidas is not at these running stores in this region. Is that what's happening across the country? You guys need to let me know. You guys that go to specialty running shops, let me know. Um, that's it. I'm going to wrap this up way too long. I definitely apologize, but hopefully you guys got something out of it. I love these conversations. I appreciate everyone on LinkedIn. And um, let's keep the conversations going, man. This is good stuff. You know, I'm not teaching anymore, so I got time. Let's do this, right? See you guys on the next one. Peace.